The Ponsetti treatment is based on the concept of the Carcaniopedus block, originally described by Inman in 1976. According to this concept, the midfoot and the calcaneus form a functional unit and most of the motion in the joints takes place around the talus. This is why the correction of the deformity must be made against a fixed talus and not at the calcaneocuboid joint as described in other redressment methods. The talus is kept in place using the thumb of the right hand without fixing the calcaneus at the same time. The motion of the calcaneopedus block around the talus can be seen clearly in abduction. Motion of the single joints in the midfoot is minimal and not relevant to correcting clubfoot deformity. Another important element in the Ponsetti method is the direction of manipulation. The foot is first manipulated in supination and then in abduction. The foot is corrected against the fixed talus here. The supination at the beginning of treatment is necessary to correct the slightly pronated position of the forefoot with respect to the hindfoot. When applying the first plaster cast, manipulation in this direction corrects the cavus foot component. The second crucial concept in the Ponsetti treatment is the kinematic coupling. A varied alignment of the three articular facets of the subtalar joint creates a complex movement pattern which ultimately boils down to a combination of a varus position of the heel, plantar flexion, a deduction and inversion of the calcaneus. All components can be seen to a minimal degree in this healthy child. By correcting the deformities along one joint plane, the correction of the other planes of movement occurs simultaneously and without direct manipulation due to the mandatory movement direction in the subtalar joint. This too can easily be seen in the child with normal feet. The dorsal extension simultaneously achieves vagization eversion and abduction. In the lateral projection we see the calcaneus emerge from its position beneath the head of the talus and move into the synostasi. Thus, if only the forefoot is abducted, this results in an improvement of the equinus. Please pay attention to the parallel position of the talus and the calcaneus and the improvement of the position with respect to each other. Observing the talocalcaneal angle described by Kite in the lateral plane, we can also see this in the radiographic assessment before and after the correction. The heel varus will also not be corrected by direct manipulation. Due to the kinematic coupling we mentioned before, the hind foot will be brought into the valgus position by abduction. This is done without applying any pressure to the heel. The calcaneofibular ligament is being stretched. Once more a demonstration of incorrect manipulation techniques on the calcaneocuboid joint. Correction of the adductus is achieved through a secondary deformation in the midfoot area. It is not possible to correct the deformity along the other planes by fixing the calcaneus. Instead, a manipulation against the fixed talus corrects the clubfoot in a natural way by complying with the physiological movement direction in the subtalar joint. The example here shows a five-day-old baby with bilateral idiopathic clubfoot. At the beginning of every casting session, the foot is examined before manipulation. Common classification systems like the ones described by Dimeglio or Pirani are used. The Pirani score assesses six criteria of the club foot. Each criterion is given a full point if development has reached its maximum stage. In the right foot we can see only a slight medial crease, but a marked deep posterior crease. The adductus is being examined. The distance between the navicular and the medial malleolus may also be used for further assessment. 
The heel pad is soft with a high calcaneal inclination. The equinus component is about 5 degrees. When applying the plaster cast, it is essential to apply the padding tightly around the foot to prevent the foot from sliding upwards later. The less padding material that is used, the better the manipulation will be in the cast. The direction of manipulation in the first cast is supination. The cavus can be corrected after only one or two casts. It is recommendable to use quick setting plaster. In the case of a calm child, the cast can be applied immediately, extending to the groin. If the child is relatively active, it is recommended to apply the cast in two steps. However, a long leg cast should always be used because otherwise the cast will not keep the increasingly abducted foot in place. Here you can see subination of the foot by lifting the first ray the lateral fixation of the talus and avoidance of direct manipulation of the calcaneus. The baby does not appear to be disturbed by this. Here you can see once again the subination position of the foot in the first cast. The plaster cast is applied in the same way to the right foot. Subination by raising the first ray against the fixed talus. By constantly moving both hands, we can avoid pressure sores from developing on the skin, especially over the talus. Ultimately, all toes are freed from the cast. A final look at the cast shows the supination position of the feet. One week later, the cast is removed from both legs. It is recommendable to use a plaster cast breaker to remove the cast. This avoids traumatizing the child with a loud cast saw. The saw also increases the risk of accidentally injuring the skin due to the thin padding. After the first cast, we can already see a clear correction of the baby's feet. Again, both feet are assessed and classified. The cavus is corrected. Midfoot and hindfoot form a plane on the bottom of the foot. We see a clear correction of the adductus and an improved range of motion against the talus. The equinus is now reduced to neutral position. The right side too shows improvement in the manipulability of the navicular moving away from the medial malleolus. In the same way, the cotton padding is applied very closely to the foot and more loosely in the calf region. For demonstration purposes, we will see now the application of the short leg cast first which will then be extended to a long leg cast. A slight abduction of the foot can already be seen.
plaster cast fixes the knee in 90 degrees of flexion and the foot in about 10 degrees of abduction. You can already see the future correction of the equinus. The cast is applied in the same way on the left side. The supination component during manipulation is visibly reduced now. The foot is increasingly manipulated into abduction. After another week, the casts are removed. You can notice excellent correction results with both feet increasingly abductable now reaching about 30 degrees. Dorsal extension has also improved further. The adductus is corrected. The distance between medial malleolus and navicular has increased further. The heel pad is soft with a high calcaneal inclination. The other side shows similar results. We can see the progressing abduction on the third cast, which has now reached approximately 30 degrees on both sides. About five casting sessions are usually required to obtain correction of the deformity. 90% of the cases then require a percutaneous tenonomy of the Achilles tendon. We are pleased to take note that the correction in this baby is excellent after only three casts. A percutaneous tenotomy of the Achilles tendon is indicated due to the lack of dorsal extension. Tenotomy can be performed at the hospital on an outpatient basis. First of all, an Emler plaster is applied in the area where the tenotomy is going to be performed. The plaster is left for 15 minutes, then the area is disinfected and the percutaneous tenotomy of the Achilles tender is performed. For the tenotomy, insert a number 11 scalpel medially from the palpable tendon. Then underrun the tendon and perform a complete tenotomy. The tiny incision site can easily be closed with two sterile strips. Then the last plaster cast is applied in the maximum correct position. This is usually where abduction reaches 60 to 70 degrees and the dorsal extension of the foot about 20 degrees. <laughs>